Welcome to Hue Forge 070 Beta. Um, I want to go over some quality of life improvements I've made in Hue Forge that I think will make your experience significantly better. Now, these features are probably not going to change very much through the beta, but if they do, just be aware this is the beta video and there might be some updates in the future. Now, the first one I want to talk about is filament filtering. The filament library is very large, it's getting bigger, there's even more filaments coming before the beta period ends. And it becomes very, very difficult to sort through it and find what you want, even if you have owned filaments checked off. Um, so what I added was just the quick ability to do partial word matching. So I could do BAM to get bamboo and WH to get whites. Uh, you can type the whole word, obviously, but it is, you know, you get the same result by just typing in a few words. So each word is a must. I have no special logic for not this or plus this. It's all combined but it lets you get quickly to the filament that you want, and it works for all tabs. It works all your tab filters all your tabs down by those values. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, and also if you're somewhere else and you've been doing some other work uh, in the tool and you need access to the filter, you can hit Alt F and go straight there and look for your yellows. For so hopefully that helps. I think it makes the way I interact with the filament library completely different. All right, let's talk about sliders. A few things have changed in sliders. First, we're able to enable and disable sliders. You want to see what impact a particular slider has on your image. You can click on the button down below and see the difference. That's super easy and super convenient when you just want to check which color is better or um, which layer height to put it or whether you like having that color in there or not. Um, it's a feature that honestly has been a long time coming in Hue Forge, and I should have added a long time ago. You also can drag and drop colors from the swatches below onto other sliders and have them available for use. Now, this is mostly useful in color pop and color aware modes where you do want multiple version copies of the same color. And it's annoying to have to search for your black and then search for your white, even with the filters. This makes it a lot faster. Third thing is you're now able to reorder your sliders. Um, this doesn't make a difference to Hue Forge, but it can be a lot easier for a user to understand what's going on, especially when you've done some color aware or some of these things and you've got a lot of sliders all over the place at different heights, and then you can just reorder them all very quickly um, and get them sorted. And they do treat uh, disabled sliders as um, going to the end of the list. They're, the, they don't move, the, their height should stay the same, but they're treated as if they're zero height and put at the end of the list. So you can get rid of all your disabled sliders out of the middle of this list. Um, also, you might notice this box here. We'll talk about that in a minute. I will comment though that these plus and minus buttons for adding and removing sliders are much more clearly disabled now. And the text pop-up does tell you that they only work with no image loaded. And this is for reasons um, of uh, programming. It is very difficult to make sure that all the possible effects of changing the number of sliders in the middle of a project edit um, are accounted for. And so I took the easy way out that can't have a project loaded. So you would need to go up here to file close, and then you can add and remove the sliders you want. You can only remove sliders that are at zero height and you can't go below four sliders. Um, now, whatever changes you make here do persist across um, runs. So when you close Hueforge and open it back up again, you'll have the same number of sliders. I erred on the side of fewer sliders to help people with smaller screens um, get around Hueforge more easily. Let's talk about model geometry. A couple things have changed here. The biggest one is the brightness compensation um, icon indicator. Now, the brightness compensation is probably one of the least used features for most users, and it's because it was very unclear how it worked. Now, we have a graph that shows you how it's working. So when you first load up, I've been playing with this for a little while, when you first load up, the default will be that the power level is two. Um, that is equivalent to the old power level of the Bright Enhance 1, 2, Dim 1, 2, and um, the Bright Dark Enhance. Those power levels are the same. They were all squared. Now I allow you to adjust the power of it so you can make it a stronger or a weaker effect as you desire. Um, the nice thing here is that the Fine Control, if you adjust down here to Fine, is the smallest increment of adjustment you can make in Hueforge. So you can get very, very small increases in shadow, very, very small decreases you have the most control over your overall image outcome by using the fine adjust slider. 
on a brightness compensation. I've also added a lot more brightness compensations and have attempted to name them more meaningful names. Um, but, and then to read this icon, this icon reads from right to left is the luminance value. So this would be the luminance value, however it's calculated. Sometimes it's not calculated by standard luminance now, but the luminance value, and then vertical is the vertical Z height. So what this says is a very small amount of luminance increase gives me a pretty good amount of Z height, and then it's flatter up here. So it helps you visualize what's happening to your mesh so that you know if you have an area that you want to have more detail in, and it currently doesn't, maybe a dark region, you would bring in a bright enhance that would give you more detail in the dark regions, more layers in the dark regions, so you have less of that stair step effect. So hopefully um, that's helpful to you as well. I have added this unbiased lighting option. It is very experimental. It attempts to resh to shift uh, lighting to be more even across an image. Now it doesn't play nicely with sRGB at all. Um, it always gives you these um, stepping effects when you do that. But in regular, it attempts to undo any um, bright or dark bias in this image to make it more flat imaged. It can be very, very useful in some images and not so useful in other images. Hopefully you find some images that helps you for. The last thing I wanna talk about is this gradient bar. This gradient bar is here and also here. What is it? Well, it's the actual color stack. These are the colors at each layer in the mesh. So this is um, gradiated by whatever your mesh layer height is. This one's at 0.04. So this is a point, each one of these color steps is at 0.04. Um, and it tracks the sliders. As I move the slider, you can see that it goes up and down. And if you look next to the slider, you can see that it's very clearly defined by where the slider is. So the um, the gradient here is just to show how it tracks with the sliders. But here it can be very, very useful to let you see how the colors are blending, what changing, what removing and adding uh, tints does to the overall blending. And then also in color aware and color pop mode, it can give you a lot more indication, visual indication of how your overall stack is working. So I think these are some great enhancements to your um, workflow in, um, in HueForge, and hopefully you find them useful as well. And one last thing, Control Z and Control Y do now work in most contexts. They won't work in everything. There are some known bugs. I'm still working them out, but they are functional um, in most places within a project.